One of the stories coming out of the pay-per-view was the no-show by Mauro Ranallo, who was scheduled to work some Survivor Series matches, including some Survivor Series matches with Corey Graves, which would have been very awkward. He showed up to the building, and I'll tell you why in a second. He showed up to the building with his friend Frank Shamrock, and then he left at some point before the show began. And over the course of that day, earlier in the day, I believe, he deactivated his Twitter account. Now, on TV, during the show, they had Michael Cole cover for him, claiming that Morrow wasn't uh, there. He was supposed to be. He wasn't there due to... He was so emotional the night before during that War game show that he lost his voice. And they were hopeful, you know, we'd see him Wednesday night back in the saddle on NXT, which, by the way, he was not. Because, you know, when I lose my voice, I always delete my Twitter account. Makes sense. Of course, that was a lie. It happened after Corey Graves tweeted some shade at Morrow the night before. He was basically, impl- without even naming Morrow by name, saying that he talks too much. And because of that, we never get to hear Nigel McGuinness. We've got this former Ring of Honor World Champion on commentary. And we've got a WWE Hall of Famer and Beth Phoenix. But you would never know it. So he tweeted that out during the TakeOver show. Now, Corey Graves, he knows what Mauro Ranallo, his story is, and what he's dealt with, and what he continues to work through. Uh, serious mental health struggles, bipolar. He's been very open about all of this stuff. And coming into the weekend, Mauro even said uh, publicly that he was worried. You know, he knew that he would be working, this was his first main roster show, I believe, Uh, Since the JBL debacle when he left the SmackDown booth and he ended up going to NXT. So Graves tweeted anyway. Because Corey Graves is a dick. Now if he has an issue with somebody who works in the same company. And you know that this person may be sensitive to these types of things. Then you take it up with him personally. And if you don't really mean it, and you want to try to shoot your own wrestling angle, which is what he now claims he was trying to do, and I think he's full of shit when he says that also, I think that's a cover. But that's what he claimed on his podcast. I was just trying to, you know, stir things up and start some kind of, ooh, controversy. (laughs) Then at least let the other person know. Let him know, hey, listen, don't take what I'm about to, to tweet personally. Here's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to stir things up, you know, between the brands. Just wanted to give you a heads up. He didn't do that. And after being called out on it, he doubled down on his stupidity. And he bashed Dave Meltzer. It's all Dave Meltzer's fault. I mean, I guess it was low-hanging fruit for him after Seth Rollins called out Meltzer last month, claiming he had spoken up at that talent meeting after the Saudi Arabia show and In fact, Rollins said he never did. He never said a word. There was a talent meeting, but he never stood up and gave some kind of rah-rah speech. And when Meltzer learned that he had been fed this uh, misinformation, he apologized. He apologized publicly to Seth Rollins. So he's sort of public enemy number one right now among, among the ranks of some of the talent in WWE. Easy target. So Corey decided to play the Meltzer card. And said, you have my number, you so-called journalist. Call me if you want the truth. Well, a few days later, Graves waited until his podcast dropped, his WWE podcast, to issue an apology, if you could call it that. He thought that his tweet was something that would stir up controversy and give him something to talk about on television or on his podcast. He said it may not have been the most professional way to go about doing things, but it was never meant to offend, disrespect, or disparage anybody. That was never his intention. And he said, if somebody took it that way, I apologize. Ah, yes. The old, I'm sorry if you were offended, apology, non-apology. I love those. That is not a real apology, by the way. If you don't want to apologize, don't apologize. Don't, Don't give some bullshit apology. If that's how you really feel, then don't don't say anything at all. That's about as disingenuous an apology as you can give. He said he didn't mean to cause anybody any undue stress, especially a coworker, and he apologized one more time before moving on to other topics. 
I'm still waiting for him to explain what was so false about Meltzer. I want to know what the big lie was that, that Meltzer reported that caused him to kind of lash out at him and go off on him the way that he did. He was very angry. He was posting uh, two, three, four different things on Twitter about Dave. I'd like to know what was so false now that he's come out and apologized. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not the defender of all things Meltzer. He fucked up on that Rollins story, bottom line. But seems to me that he may be owed an apology too on this one. So Graves was an asshole. He only made things worse for himself by doubling down when all he had to do, when he saw that the heat was rising, all he had to do was say, I fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say, I'm sorry. Tomorrow I meant no ill will. And that's it. That's all he had to do. Instead of acting all defensive about it. We all make mistakes. We all say things we regret at one time or another. Those with class handle them the right way. Corey Graves did not handle this the right way, so draw from that your own conclusion on what that means. And here's the really egregious thing about it. On World Mental Health Day in October, I was going to say last month, it's December 1st now, but basically a month ago, month and a half ago, it was World Mental Health Day, and Corey Graves tweeted this. So I saw this being shared around on social media, and I just thought this was too precious not, not, not to mention this here. Until you have felt its power, it's difficult to understand depression and anxiety. It's very real and even worse without someone to lean on. Ask for help, or if someone close to you is suffering, please just listen. It might make all the difference. Maybe he ought to start taking his own advice. If you've never seen the Mara Ranala documentary, uh, it's called Bipolar Rock and Roller. It gives you this great insight into uh, his life and, and what he goes through on a daily basis. It's up right now. It's The whole full documentary is up for free uh, on YouTube if you search for it. Uh, I encourage everybody to go watch it if you've never seen it before. And it made me even angrier when I saw it pop up on uh, YouTube and I was watching back certain parts of it because it had been a while since I saw it. And I was watching certain parts of it again and it just made me angry. But uh, it's really well done. Morrow was supposed to be back on NXT on Wednesday. He was not there. Uh, Tom Phillips filled in for him. Tom Phillips is really good. And a, a more than capable replacement. Uh, but hopefully we will get Morrow back on TV this week.